Number 32, a 1.00 times 10 to the negative 6 gram sample of no nobulum, right? Yeah, nobulum, which is NO with a, a mass number of 254. It has a half-life of 55 seconds after it was formed. What is the percentage of the nobulum 254 remaining at the following times? And then we have to just find out what's going on at one hour, 1.0 hours after it forms. Okay. So it seems like we're talking about some radioactive material. I know this because I only see that they only gave me one element with a mass number and an atomic number. So we know that nobulum being a single atom is going to decay into a more stable isotope. Now, do we care about what the isotope is? No, not for this problem, because all the information that they gave us was for that nobulum. Nobulum has a half-life of 55 seconds, and they wanted to find out what the percentage of the nobulum was after one hour after it was formed. Okay, so let's see. Now, there's one big thing to know that if you're talking about radioactive decay, which is basically what we're talking about here, and I know that it's radioactive decay because it's only one element, just know that all radioactive decay, there is no exceptions. So whether they give you an NO, if they give you just a carbon, if they give you just a nitrogen, this radioactive decay always abides by first order kinetics. Now, Generally speaking, if this is like a traditional, you know, chemistry course, you've probably already done your kinetics chapter before you did your nuclear chem chapter. So those first order kinetic formulas applies here. Now, a lot of times they try to give you new formulas for this chapter, but I don't think that's necessary. You already learned your first order kinetics. Why can't you just use those? And that's the ones that I put down here. It's much easier to just memorize, you know, two formulas and use them for two chapters as opposed to doing brand new formulas just because it's radioactive decay. If all radioactive decay abides by first order kinetics, you can use those equations that you already know. So that's what we're going to do here. I think it's easier. So let's see. We're going to use those, those formulas, right? And they want to know what is the percentage of the nobulum remaining. So if they're looking for the percentage, they want to know basically a amount value, right? Is it 10% that's remaining? Is it 20%? Is it 40%? Right? That's the quantity. The quantity is in the percentage. And if you're looking for an amount, you're going to be using this formula. Because this formula out of the two first order kinetic formulas are the ones that have the amounts in them. And that's denoted by this like little bracket thing. Generally, they're concentrations, but they don't have to be. They could be percents. They could be uh, fractions. So just know that this one without the zero, this is the uh, This is the final amount, which means that this one with the zero, that just means that no time has passed. That's the initial amount. Now we're looking for the percentage remaining. So we're definitely looking for a final amount. So I know that I'm looking for this guy. This is my X value. But now, since we're talking about percentages, right, what's the initial percentage? If you're trying to find percent here, you got to put a percent in here. What's the initial amount that everyone starts with? Yeah, it's always 100%, right? You had a 100% sample and then you just chipped away at it, after one hour, a lower percentage is going to be remaining. So sometimes they will, you know, give you context, but not the actual values. But now the question is, where am I going to put this one time sent to the negative six grams? Uh, doesn't matter. I'm not going to use it. If they're asking for percentages, why put in a gram sample? Make it easy for yourself. So now we got these two taken care of. The only two else is the K and the T. Now the K value is the rate constant, right? But if I look here, they don't tell me anything about a rate constant. So I don't know this, but I should know it because I'm trying to find this variable. You can't have two X's in the same formula, but that's why enter in the other first order kinetic equation. And I'm just gonna, you know, blow this away. This is your half-life. 
T half is denoted as a half life, and your half life for radioactive decay is always 0.693 divided by that rate constant. Oh, they told us we had a half life of 55 seconds. So I know this number, 55. So from there, I can find out the K value, which then, bloop, I could plop into the other formula. So let's get it. 55 seconds equals uh, 0 0.693 divided by K. And we can just, you know, do our little cross multiplication, right? 55 times K. Bada bing, bada boom. 55. Spingity spo. 55. <laughs> 55K. That would be a nice subscriber count. <laughs> I think right now we're at 45. So can we make it 10 more thousand? That's up to you guys and you guys alone. Thank you so much, obviously, for the support thus far on this journey. Um, you guys rock. Absolutely. We're going to solve for K now. Divide by 55. And we get a K value of, let's see, 0 0.693 divided by 55. 0 0.0126. And this is in units of seconds to the minus 1 or 1 over seconds uh, because we use the seconds as our half-life. So we know that this is going to be... 0 0.0126. So we'll just leave a unit in there. So now let's go back to the time, right? That's lowercase t. Now this is not the half-life because it would have said t half. This is just the random amount of time that has passed. So time elapsed. That's the one hour. So it's one hours that we're searching for how long does it take, or actually, how much is going to remain after the one hour? But the problem is, that K value was in seconds, or a unit of seconds. This is in hours. So before I even plug in one hour, I have to make sure that the time units are the same. So what I'm going to do is, we're just going to, maybe what I'll do is I'll move this up a little bit. Move this up a little bit. Skype a little bit. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my one hour and I have to go to seconds. Now, if you want to go to minutes, you can, right? So we can go to minutes first and then we can go to seconds. Hours to minutes, we times by 60. And then minutes to seconds, we also times by 60. So if you want to know the shortcut, 60 times 60 is 3,600. So whether you're doing, you know, 1 times 60 times 60 or 1 times 3,600, it's the same exact answer. We know that now we have 3,600 seconds. That's going to be the time. So that's going to be, actually I won't highlight that, but now that is, whoop, that is the T value. So now instead of 1 hour, I'm going to put in 3,600 seconds. And now those second units match. So let's plug everything in. Ln of that x value equals negative. We'll just do the outline for now in black. We love the colors. So ln of x equals negative. This was the 3,600. The k value was 0 0.0126. And then we're starting off with 100%. So let's get it. Now, if you're using a TI um, 84 or an 84 plus or any type of graphing calculator, you can plug this all in in one shot. That's what I'm going to do. But if you want to find the LN first, times this and then add them together, that's fine with me. But we'll do negative this answer times 3600 plus the ln of 100. And there we go. And I did include the negative here. So I just want to make sure. Negative 0 0.0126 times 3600 plus the ln of 100. This is going to be negative 40 
point seven five, maybe five. But now we just have to undo the ln, which is the natural log. So e on both sides. Now this is going to be a really, really, really small number. I hope the calculator can do it. But if it says error, that means that essentially it's zero, that there's nothing remaining, that the number is going to be so small that it, the calculator can't even compute it. But let's see, fingers crossed. This <laughs> raised to this. <gasps> wow, it gave it to me. Okay, so 1.997. Wow. So 1.997, I mean, I guess we should round to, I guess, 2.0 right? For sig figs, but does anybody care at this point? I hear crickets. <laughs> I don't hear anything, right? Nobody cares. So 2.0 times 10 to the negative 18th, and this is actually in a percent, because we started off with 100%. Now you have 2.0. I don't like the, I don't like the, the yellow. <laughs> now you have 2.0 times 10 to the negative 8th percent. That's essentially zero. So that means that after one hour, you will have basically no more nobulum. This will all get converted into that stable isotope. And it makes sense. Your half-life is only 55 seconds, which means that every 55 seconds, your sample breaks in half. So you need a lot of half-lives to get to one hour. So it makes sense that there's basically nothing left. And that's the answer. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to helping you with more questions. Thank you so much for the support. Um, if you want to become a member to the channel to support us a little bit more, uh, you can. We have four different tiers. We got tons of perks um, if you guys are interested in that. But if not, that's totally fine. And yeah, that's all I got for you. I hope you have a great day. Keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.